Good day to you viewers and subscribers. My name is Carl Jenkins, otherwise known as Bello and Engineering, and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about elevations and how you can better interpret your elevational views whenever time you come across them on your working drawings, otherwise known as your building drawings. Now, your building is comprised of two components, which is your substructure and your superstructure. Your substructure is that portion of the building that is below ground. For example, your wall footing and your foundation. Your superstructure is that portion of the building that is above ground. Therefore, your elevational views is considered your superstructure. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you exclusively on what you can obtain from your elevational views in order to execute your building in best management practices. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Thank you. Welcome to this segment and let me get right into it by talking to you about elevations. So your elevation is merely a representation of your finished product, is a representation of your building when it is fully erected from the ground line all the way up to the roof height so as you can see this is how your building looks from the front this is the front elevation and to the right of that this is how your building looks from the back or from the rear this is the back your or your rear elevation and this is how the building looks from the side so basically your elevational views is a representation of your finished product how your fully constructed building or your fully erected building looks from the front from the side and from the back now in terms of construction your elevation must be read in conjunction with your floor plan with your floor plan and also your your section because when you want to obtain the height of your windows and your doors you turn to your elevational views are your sectional views so on the plan the windows and doors are shown in plan so on the elevation windows and doors and columns and other features are shown in heights so as you can see here this is a window which is four feet high and it is cut three feet from your finished floor level under normal circumstances, we know that your windows are cut three feet above your finished floor level. But in other circumstances, and this is why it is so important to read your sectional views in conjunction with your elevation, because at times your windows can be cut from your finished floor level all the way up to your ceiling height. Some building or some architects, you know, design their buildings with floor to ceiling windows. 
And as a contractor, you must pay keen note to that. So it's not every single time you're going to see your window cut three feet away from your finished floor level. So there are several other components that you can get from your elevation. You can get the height of your doors. So this is a door here. And, it, and if you notice, this door is seven feet high. You can also get the bottom floor height, which is 12 feet right, right here. You can also obtain your thickness of your slab and your finished floor level for your upper floor. And you can also get the height of your upper floor all the way up to your belt beam and the height of your roof from your top of belt beam to the top of your ridge. In this case, the height of this roof or the maximum height of this roof is 10 feet. So your elevation, other than the aesthetical looks or the looks of the finished product, it is also a drawings that should be interpreted to get your construction fully in order or in compliance with your working joint. So you can get the height of your windows, the height of your doors. You can also get the height of your column. You can get the height of your, your, um, your floor level. You can get your floor heights. You can get your roof heights. Therefore, if these heights are not given on your elevations, you can turn to your sectional views. Now, your sectional view or your sectional cuts, this, in this instance, is section AA. And let me demonstrate to you how we arrive at this sectional views looking in the building so one thing to point out that the elevational views is looking at the building from the outside while your sectional views is looking at the building from the inside so one is outside which is the elevation and the section is in the inside of the building so let me show you how we get our section to look like that so we have to go back to our floor plan and remember what i've said in previous in a previous video that your floor plan is very very key drawing wise right so this symbol here which my cursor is going around represents the sectional symbol as you can see it is section aa right and over on the left here is the same thing, section AA. So if you notice the apex of the triangle is pointing in a part in a upper direction. Okay? On the other side, the same thing, it is pointing in an upward direction. And what that means is that that is the direction that you're actually looking when you actually make the section cut so in this instance the section is cut through this bedroom the kitchen and this bedroom so it is bedroom one kitchen and bedroom two so all you do is just draw what you see so in this instance you're going to see this window you're going to see this door you're going to see this window you're going to see the kitchen window here and the kitchen feet and the kitchen fixtures over here the same thing the windows and doors and notice this section cut through this window and and for drawing purpose i usually cut my section through a particular window because on the section i want to show you where i have my height of my lintel right so immediately above when you cut through that window you're gonna see here you're gonna see your 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 um your your lintel okay and we usually put a lintel over openings over your window opening 
and your door opening. And the reason, let me give you a little bit of engineering now. The reason why we put lintel over the doors and over windows is that when you have a opening in a building that is the weakest point, it means all the stresses in the wall is going towards that opening. So when we put a lintel over a door opening or a window opening is just to resist against the tensile stresses that is going towards that opening. So that's the reason why we put lintel over doors and, and windows because it represents the weakest part of your structure. The perfect structure or the perfect building and many people, you know, do not realize this is that your perfect structure or your perfect building is a building without any door or any window. And that is why the pyramids of Egypt, the pyramids of Giza, that is why they last for thousands of years because there's no opening. So there's no stress in those walls to let the building structural integrity compromise. So point to note, if the height of your windows and your doors is not given on your elevation, you can always go to your section and obtain those heights, right? So that is basically where elevation is concerned. It is just there as a representation of the finished building. But as a builder or a contractor, it is also useful to get the height of your doors, your height of your windows, your height of your roof, your height of your finished floors, and also the overall height of your building. So whatever you can obtain from your elevation, you can move to your section and obtain those heights. And I think the parish council to submit a drawings you have to submit if you're going to submit three elevation you have to submit along with that three elevation one sectional cut or you can submit two elevation and two sectional cut so your elevation other than just the aesthetical look it really give the builder or the contractor the information that is relevant heights of your building and your height of your roof so therefore that pretty much sums up the elevation it is not really as detailed as the floor plan or as the foundation plan but it is still worthy to be looked at so that is it for this video and in the next video I'm going to be talking to you about floor slabs and how to properly read your floor slab. So if you like the video, hit the like button, share, subscribe and comment. And if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section and I will be glad to answer your question. Thank you and that's it. Thanks.